Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video I'm going to look at the Midnight Mule League as it stands at the end of game week 21. Look at how I did in game week 21 then look forward to game week 22. So we start by looking at the Midnight Mule FPL's highest scorer for the week and the manager was Carlton Duplessis and the team was Boom Saka and they scored a very impressive 97 points. This is how the team lined up. They got Raya for 10 points at the back and then three Newcastle boys who got 8, 6 and 6. So that's a whole load of points, about 30 points at the back. There are quite a few teams now going for three Newcastle players at the back. I'll probably move to that or quite possibly come game week 26. But because of a potential blank in 25, I'll probably resist it until then. But apart from the massive score at the back, they got 10 from Atoma, 6 for De Bruyne. Saka 9, Odegaard 5, everyone had Haaland, then Tony got 1, Martinelli got 2. On the bench they had Alisson for 9, but Raya got 10, so that was better, and Martinez for 8, but United did let in a goal, 2 goals, 3 goals. Martinez just got 8 because he got a goal, so you're never going to predict to put Martinez on because you think he's going to score. Now if we look at FPL Game Week website, I'm not affiliated, you can look for the current week the players you got rid of and the players you brought in. And you can see that he made four subs, assume it's a he, uh, for a total points difference of nine. So took out Perisic for six and Edouard for two, but brought in Matoma for ten, Trippier for eight, Byrne for six and Tony for one. So that was a, that was a good set of transfers there. Top of our league is still Jacob Eriksson with Skog's Kalanton IF, currently on 1360, but the lead is gradually getting eroded so some subs may be needed here unless he thinks his team's good enough as it is so here we are we have Kepa for nine Trippier for eight De Bruyne is six Rashford seven Haaland 34 so nothing particularly special because most people had Haaland and Captainton that means most people got a good score on the weeks where Haaland gets one or two points most people get a low score so it really does distort the scores quite a bit and then on the bench, only Cucurella who got anything worth mentioning with six, but quite justifiable to leave Cucurella away to Liverpool, leave him on the bench and play Shaw instead or Ake. That's, that's perfectly reasonable, I think. As for me, I'm down in 54th. Got 89 points, currently on 1,212. This is how my team lined up. So... It was Enketia that really saved me. He got 13 points and he's not owned by many people. So that helped me. Perisic's not highly owned. He got me six. Fernandez still isn't highly owned. He got me five. But the rest, De Bruyne, six. Rashford, seven. Trippier, eight. Edison, six. Quite a few people have got those. And uh, you'll see I've got Bamford as well. I'll probably come to him later. Mention him later. And on my bench, only Armour got any points with three. Perfectly fine that he was on the bench and I played Martinelli instead. Not a problem there. So 89 points overall. So globally, that's a game week rank of 314,000. So our overall rank is around the one and a half million mark. So I did get a green arrow this week. But it's normally around this time of year where, for whatever reason, my rank seems to gradually go up and up. So the fact that I'm near two million really doesn't bother me because that's where I normally am. So let's see if this year I also magically seem to climb up in the second half of the season. So I'm now halfway between 1 million and 2 million, 20 points from either. So that's fine where I am. I'm, I'm not the least bit nervous. <laughs> really not. 450 subs. Thank you very much to everyone who does watch these videos and subscribes and likes them and leave comments. FPL Game Week, we can look at a content creators league and where we'd appear in them. So top is Ben Krellin, does an awful lot of work for the community. Second place is Ross, but he is gradually slipping down. He got the worst score in the top five this week. Harry's up to fourth place. And I'm all the way over on page two, down in 53rd. And I'm not familiar with anyone else around me regarding the content creators. Now game week 20, I made some subs for a cost of eight points. I like to track my subs across four weeks. So I took out Kepa James Cancelo Sterling and brought in Edison Perisic, Doherty and De Bruyne. And in game week 20, I was one point worse off for the players that I uh, brought in. The week just gone, 
the players I got would have would have got nine points, and that was all down to Kepa. The players I got in actually got eighteen points. So overall, now the players I took out in game week twenty have got twenty points since then. The players I brought in have got twenty eight points, but it cost me eight points, so it's net zero now. So uh, at the moment, it wasn't worth doing, but on the other hand, it didn't really cost me either. Now, I did say last week a possible transfer was to take out Martial, who I was nervous about his minutes, and would he actually do anything? And as it happened, he didn't. And I was thinking of either Bamford, Nyonto, or Tony. And in the end, I went for Bamford. And I did that partly through the week because Martial looked like his price was going to drop and I didn't want to be losing the money. But from the next morning, I'd wish I'd done Nonto instead because he was clearly more likely to start. However, fortunately for me, Leeds didn't score and Bamford came on with 11 minutes to spare, which makes me think there's maybe more chance of either Bamford starting next time or maybe coming on a bit earlier. Or that might just be my wishful thinking. So... If I was doing the transfer now, I probably would bring in Nonto, but I'm not beating myself up too much that ended up with Bamford. And we all know that Bamford can score goals. Presumably he's on penalties, but it could be Rodrigo, but they may not both be on the pitch at the same time anyway. As for game week 22, I'm currently highly likely to take out Perisic and bring in Luke Shaw. Obviously, if Shaw doesn't get injured. United are currently penciled in to have a double game week against Leeds. If that doesn't go ahead, will I still do this transfer? Probably. I'll probably still do it anyway because uh, they'll be at home to Crystal Palace Man United, so it's still going to be worth me doing. So the captain for game week 22, assuming it's a double game week, I think I'm going to put it on Fernandez. I really like Fernandez, and I think he's got a reasonably good chance of getting maybe 12 points over a double game week. And I may even triple captain him. Now, of all the chips that we have, I think triple captain's the least useful. It makes the smallest difference, generally speaking. So if I get this call wrong, it's not a major deal. And then my vice captain, assuming it's a double game week, would be Rashford. Of the two, I think Rashford will be captained by more people than Fernandez is, simply because he's got more points so far and he's maybe expected to get more points. However, I'm ever so slightly nervous that he may get injured, um, he may get pulled off, and also it's feasible he's going to get two points and two points, whereas I think Fernandez has got more chance of being involved with goals, albeit only assists. So it's more like Rashford might get four or five points, could get 20 points. I think Fernandez is safer to get 12 points. But what do I know? <laughs> we'll see what happens. So my team as it stands, as I'm expecting it to be, I would have Shaw, Rashford and Fernandes with two home games, one against Palace, one against Leeds. I'd have Bamford up front, away to Forest and away to Man United. I wouldn't expect him to get 90 minutes in either of those games, but he may well get a goal. Obviously, he could get two goals, might get three goals, who knows? Might get nothing. And then Trippier at home to West Ham, but everyone's got Trippier. And then, this is interesting, we've got Martinelli and Nketiah away to Everton. Now, I was seriously considering selling Elmron this week, transferring him out and bringing in Odegaard for a minus four because I feel that Everton are so poor at the moment and Arsenal are so good that Martinelli could easily get way more than four points than Elmron would. But the trouble with my system at the moment is I've also got De Bruyne and Haaland. So if I swap Elmron for Odegaard, it means I'm going to put De Bruyne on the bench. Tottenham have had two clean sheets in the last four games, but I think I'm perfectly happy keeping De Bruyne, especially for the four points here. So that means I'm not going to be getting Odegaard this week as things stand. And then in goal, I've got Edison, and my last defender is Dunk for Brighton at home to Bournemouth. And then on the bench, I've got Aaron at home to West Ham. He's a fine first one to come on. And then Doherty and Bueno, and then Ward to the keeper. And that's how things are looking for my game week 22 as things stand. Obviously, of the FA Cup, we could get injuries. The double game week may not happen. And before game week 22 starts, we'll have a hopefully more of an idea of who's going to blank in game week 25. We know there are going to be four teams that are going to blank. We just don't know for sure which ones they are. 
So if it ends up being Newcastle that are blanking, then there's pretty much no chance I'd be bringing in any Newcastle players before then. But if they don't blank in 25, then maybe I'll bring their defenders in sooner. There we have it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.